Upshot, Multi-World Disc Golf's podcast about the latest in the disc golf world. It's Wednesday, July 31st. Ledgestone starts tomorrow. I'm Charlie Eisenhood, editor. Joining me, Josh Mansfield. Josh, your uh, your coveted Elite Plus Ledgestone Open is here. Give us give us the hype. Give us the hype. You got the hype? <laughs> I've got no hype, Charlie. You got no hype? <laughs> I've got no hype. Uh, listen. <laughs> <laughs> Northwood gone. North- Josh got no hype. Uh, I I like Lake Eureka. I think it's a fun course. And while and I, I think I said this last week or during the reacts. While I think the things like throwing from a bridge and around water towers have become kind of like we've just used to it because Ledgestone's been happening for over a decade now. Like if if that wasn't the case and and Lake Eureka came onto the course or onto the tour for the first time this year, like those use of those urban infrastructure would be seen as something that is kind of remarkable as the tour tries to find space in more and higher populated areas in order to expand. That's one of the things I love about Lake Eureka. Uh, It's a sprint. You've got to shoot. Well, you've got to shoot. You got to get the birdies. uh, And there are some really challenging and technical holes. Uh, But the thing that has, to me, always made Ledgestone great is its combination with one of the most demanding woods courses uh, in the in the world. And without it, it's just not going to be the same. And you know how I feel about four-round tournaments at the same course that is not a major. I do know how you feel. You know how I feel about that. I know how you feel. <laughs> it does not need to be spoken. We all understand how you feel. <laughs> I, yeah. no- I knock MVP for that. and That's at Maple Hill. <laughs> at least they're changing a couple pin positions. Good. Good, but I would like to see maybe like eighteen new pin positions. Right, personally, yeah. I think I know that maybe is an unrealistic expectation at this point in the sport sure. uh, history, but it would it would make it a little bit easier to watch the same course four times if you saw it really two different courses. Yeah, yeah, I I completely agree. Uh, Sunset Hills, I, I think on the flip side is one that. Unlike Lake Eureka, Lake Eureka has gotten um, easier. I mean, the pros just shred it now. It, it really is that kind of sprint. Sunset Hills, I think, is one that is so much better tuned to the FPO game and, and really is an elite course when it comes to FPO course design relative to their skills and abilities. And so I, I am excited to watch Sunset Hills. Uh, I think that's going to be good. I've never liked the FPO finish at Northwood. It often feels like FPO kind of limps into the finish line as opposed to uh, you know, like going out with a really kind of spectacular final round that 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 I think has a lot of fireworks, and and it's no fault of the FPO field. It's just Northwood is blisteringly hard, and so I, I am excited that Sunset is going to be the end round as well, uh, and the ability to that place to kind of showcase the FPO game. Yeah, better for fans for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, there were some eight unders last year at Sunset. Uh, yeah. Owen Scoggins, Holland Hanley, Stacy Ronsley all shot eight downs. Um. So we've got we got plenty more to discuss. We actually went and pulled the numbers. Josh pulled the numbers yep. on performance at just Eureka and um, Sunset over the last few years. So we're going to talk about the players who have excelled on those courses and perhaps to have that inform our picks. But before that, I talked yesterday with Nate Heinold, TD of Ledgestone. We do talk Ledgestone. We also talk a little bit about the upcoming World Championships where he's also the TD. So that interview is coming up right now. Stay tuned to The Upshot. The Upshot is presented by Pound Disc Golf, makers of the best bags in the sport. Pound Disc Golf's got some new colorways of patchwork octahols made using a scrap fabric. So you can get a combo like olive, navy, and coyote, charcoal, typhon, and turquoise, or black forest and charcoal. Go to pounddiscgolf.com. Get yourself an octahol. If, I mean, if you really want to take some discs and some beers and some water and everything else that you need, get yourself an octahol. Uh, they've also got some new multi-cam fanny packs. So uh, if you just need a little bag, we go from huge to small, Get a fanny pack, pounddiscgolf.com. Check out all the options. Are you tired of being tired? Are you ready to get eight hours of unbroken sleep? If you answered yes to either of those questions, our sponsor here may be able to help. Sunset Lake CBD sponsors The Upshot and their hemp farm up in Vermont. 
making CBD products designed to help you get better sleep. As a former dairy farm that produced dairy and cream for another Vermont staple, Ben & Jerry's, Sunset Lake CBD is no stranger to quality ingredients or standing behind their products. In fact, they test every product for potency and purity and put the results online for all to see. They'll even mail you a copy with your order. I can attest to that. Uh, and that includes all of their nighttime products. Sunset Lake has gummies, tinctures, and soft gels designed to help you sleep gently and naturally. I uh, already mentioned I'm thinking about taking some sleep gummies with me uh, to Australia or on my trip. I got to make sure that I'm not going to violate any international laws. But I am going to check that out because I've used the sleep gummies in the past with the melatonin. And man, it knocks you out. And you get a great night's sleep. You don't feel groggy in the morning. Wake up ready to go. But can really help when you're just having a hard time getting sleep or maybe you're dealing with some jet lag, you know. Um, so head over to sunsetlakecbd.com. Our listeners can get 20% off their order with code UPSHOT at checkout. Again, it's sunsetlakecbd.com. Sleep sound knowing that they stand behind their products. Sunset Lake CBD, farmer-owned, Vermont grown. Welcome back to the Upshot. Joining us now is the tournament director of the Ledgestone Open, as well as the 2024 World Championships, Nate Heinold. Nate, welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me, Charlie. Always, always great to have you on. Um, we are currently recording this interview on Tuesday, so we're two days away from the start of Ledgestone. Uh, how are things looking? It's uh, it's kind of a different year with only the the two courses involved for the pros. Yeah, Eureka is in impeccable shape. Um, we had a big EF1 tornado come through a few weeks ago, a big storm. Eureka got spared. Sunset did not. And so Sunset um, took a big hit, some big trees, some big damage. We are still doing some work at Sunset to get it up to tournament conditions. Um we're close, but we have 10 people out there right now, I think. So it happened a few weeks ago and it just caused a lot of the other work to be delayed because they had some really big trees come down. And when you have big trees come down, it takes, I mean, you got to get tree services out there and then the tree services are being in high demand. So, but I think sunset will look good. You know, it, it'll look um, close to what it did last year by Thursday morning. Do you think it's going to affect the, uh holes at all like that that stuff shots are gonna be easier because of we some of the yeah, one i mean one hole had two massive trees come down and they moved the t-pad back because of it because the hole would no longer it was a i think it's hole seven it was a par four obviously and a couple of trees came down where it would have been essentially a par 3.25 and so they moved the tee back just poured the pad last week it's muddy around the pad. We're putting mulch down this morning. Um, but no, I think the main hole, I think um, 10 looks, ha has some issues and we're fixing it right now. Um, but I think by Thursday morning, the, the holes won't be any different. The back side of the property wasn't touched. It was the golf course side, the front side that was took some damage. So, but um, they'll get it cleaned up. I think during the storm, one of their pieces of equipment was destroyed as well that they used to do some of the work. So um, bad timing, but I, I think it, we're getting it there. So, all right. Um, you know, without Northwood involved for two of the rounds and still playing four rounds out here, are you worried at all about it feeling like a little monotonous or just not quite having the same? intensity i mean jo josh ledgestone fan number one i'm sorry he's not here to kind of talk about it uh is normally you know just like can't wait for this tournament and he's like a little bit less enthusiastic about it this year how do you feel about it as the td i mean northwood is my i love northwood i would love to use it again um when the pdj gave the champions cup to morton they asked hey you know don't we like to avoid having the same course used in the same year and that was whenever that was last year, I agreed to that. Um, and that was actually, I believe, I think Joe had requested that when he was still here, I believe. And then I think, um, so I went along with it. It wasn't a tour decision. It was a PDJ ask. Um, I was fine with it. I think in hindsight, I probably would have pushed back and said, hey, let's not do that. <laughs> you know, 
um, because, but I was just trying to be a team player and I was fine with the idea. I thought people don't want to play Northwood twice in the same year. That's wrong. I think they do want to play it. I think for every pro that I've talked to is like, wait, we're not playing Northwood. I don't think they hate Eureka. I just think it gets, Eureka doesn't get as monotonous because the conditions, I mean, we had a flex event there on Saturday and then one on Sunday. The course was four strokes harder between the two days. Wow. Just the wind changed sure. five mile an hour more and changed directions and it changes the course dramatically. So I would say it's not going to play monotonous because there will be some wind. And we have alternate pin locations on three holes that, and, and two of the holes are changed dramatically. So what, what was the decision about alt, alt pin locations and, and why not do it more and why not do it at sunset? Yeah, I think with um, with Eureka, we have used them before there, and I think the thought process was let's go back to two of them and then add the new one on seventeen. With with Sunset, honestly, the women, I mean, it's the only course on tour specifically for them. They get free food all week. They get to use golf carts. We just don't hear a lot of complaints at Sunset about really anything. I mean, the the, the scoring is fun. They have the massive ten and hole eighteen. And so I would say nothing is broke there. No need to fix it. With Eureka, I did sense that we could see some monotony. I mean, you've seen an FPO this year with, I've seen 10 stroke swings. A European Open was a massive swing. I don't think we need to add anything else to FPO to see the stroke swing. For MPO, I think it's not the, it's not the worst idea to provide some variety to try to entice some more scoring separation because they're just there's so many good players that i think you could see you know a bunch of 10 downs just get a little boring so yeah oh, i mean i love the alt, alt pin position concepts for sure um how is the purse this year going to compare to last year uh we've seen purses flat or down in many cases uh, what's it going to be for Ledgestone? This is obviously one of the, the big money tournaments that we've talked about for a long time. Yeah, I think the player count's about the same as last year, maybe a little bit higher. Um, the added cash will, will be, I think, three to $5,000 higher than last year. So um, spectator counts are not higher. Player counts are on the M side for sure. Um, and so that additional money is just coming out of the general fundraising. But I don't like to go backwards. The only year I went backwards was 2019 because we hosted Pro Worlds that year, and so um, it'll be three to five thousand dollars higher than last year. Got it. Came in at one thirty nine and change, I think, last year. Um, how are ticket sales looking? Um, on the AM side, very strong. Um, AMs buy tickets, and um, you know, that is up for sure from last year. It also helps that we have 12% more players. Um, the general side of it, um, is down probably 15%. Um, and so if, with the AM side being up for ticket sales, the general non AM side being down, I bet will be flat at best. Um, but flat for us is still several thousand people. In fact, you, right. you know, Thursday at Eureka is one of the highest spectating days. It's the second highest spectating day of the tournament. We, we get a lot of people that come out Thursday. But um, last year, the weather was awful. And so I, I do think we'll see better crowds on the weekend because the weather looks really nice for the weekend. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just checking the weather forecast right now. Uh, is it looking like we're going to have some wind? It's, it's going to a little bit of rain, scattered thunderstorms Thursday, Friday, and then uh, looks beautiful on the weekend. Yeah, chance uh, of rain Thursday, Friday, but that'll bring some wind. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, a little hotter, but little wind, which is honestly good for Eureka, and it's fine for sunset. So, uh, Anything else to know about this year's Ledgestone? I mean, I, I don't know if you feel this way, but I, I, I could imagine if you do. Obviously, this is a huge tournament for you, but Worlds is a big deal too, and it's right around the corner. You know, I'm, and I, I just pulled it up right now. It says projected payout is 147,000. Oh, yeah, nice. And so that's more that's, than that's I. Significantly up. So I must have increased it more. And there could be a few drops, but that's not going to change it too much. So maybe a, a couple thousand dollars at most. So, but obviously I get pumped for Ledgestone. It's in my hometown. I mean, I live in Eureka. 
Um, it is a little tougher this year for some of the pros because a lot of them were in Estonia last week and they're getting here a day or two before the event. Some of them haven't even left Europe because of flight delays. Uh, so that's tough. I think some of them are going to be very tired. The ones that didn't play Estonia, um, the Gannon Bur or the, you know, the, um, Chris Dickerson's or the Barella's, um, those kind of players may have an upper hand, um, you know, that didn't play in Estonia, Paige Pierce. Um, just because maybe they have some more rest, but we get super pumped for Ledgestone. But in this case, I mean, I'm taking calls right now for Pro Worlds and I'm doing stuff. I mean, Pro Worlds is less than a month away. And so my team leaves like five days after Ledgestone ends. We clean up and finish on Tuesday night and they have to start packing on Wednesday and Thursday and then leave probably Friday. So, wow. um, so no rest here. So. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I want to hear a little bit more about Worlds. Um, you know, we know what we're going to get at Ledgestone. It's going to be fun. But Worlds, we got a, a new course to tour. I mean, basically both courses new to tour. Yeah, Some courses. people are a little bit more familiar with the Woods track. Um, let's start with the courses. Like, how are they looking right now? I know you've had some test events and time to work on them. Like where have things settled in? Uh, I think I certainly have, have a lot of questions about the golf course layout and, and kind of like how it's going to play. Yeah. A new London. Um, it's long in the woods, but it's, you know, I've heard, um, some people say it's, a a, a wider version of Northwood Black. And I, I think that's accurate for some of the holes. There, there, there's a couple of wide open holes in the middle of the course. Um, but New London is, I wouldn't say heavily wooded. It's wooded with pretty wide fairways. And then there are some par threes and par fours that get really, really tight. Typical Northeast woods golf. But I think you're going to see um, New London play challenging. I think you know, six to eight downs, probably a good score. You could see somebody shoot 10. It's a very long course. Um, on the women, I think even par to a couple under is going to be a really good score. You know, Ivy Hill, I've done so much work out there to with my team. Um, you know, I I think it's going to play amazing. It's It's got brand new X-Step Pro T pads. Of course, it has It'll have in of a disc catcher baskets, brand new baskets, out of bounds on every hole. There's nothing really to compare it to. It's kind of a mix of Lake Eureka without the lakes and Toboggan because the elevation is on the back nine. I mean, there are some significant elevation changes. Um, and so it's not a typical golf course that we see on tour. When I think of Champions Landing or Glendevere, um, yeah, Glendevere has some elevation, but they're pretty flat. And and Ivy Hill has some massive hills. And so Ivy Hill is going to have a lot of out of bounds. Um, it's going to have some water shots. Uh, it's going to have some areas that have significant tightening around the greens. But if the wind is down there, you're going to see double digits. If the wind is up, you know, I did a test event there when the wind was 25 miles an hour and the course was borderline you know, five over was a, was thousand rated probably. And so I think that's what you see at Eureka though. If, if it's 25 mile an hour wins, sure. five over at Eureka is thousand rated. So I think you're going to see the elements play the most, um, kind of have the most effect on the course there. So it's, is it three on Ivy? Yes. Okay. What's the, what's the layout? Like what's the order? Is it the same for both divisions? Yeah. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll play new London Wednesday and Friday. And then Ivy Hill, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. Got it. And Ivy Hill's a very, look, I think with Pro Worlds, um, kind of started at Smugs in 2018, where you had the open wooded track, Peoria 2019, open wooded track. Yep. 2020 was canceled. 2021, same thing, Mulligans and um, the uh, wooded course in Utah. The Fort. And then 2022, I think it was not really that way with, you know, two open courses, but 23, same thing. 24, same thing. Would it open? I think that is the way to go for Worlds. Um, I know next year in Europe, kind of the same way. It'll be a more park-style open, and then you have the wooded track. I think it'll test both skill sets. New London is going to test Heiser flips and that kind of stuff, and, and Ivy Hill is going to test. There are some short holes at Ivy Hill. I mean, there are going to be three par threes where they're throwing putters 
which I actually, I love because the par threes now I, I do get, when I was designing Ivy Hill, I, I didn't want a bunch of 500 foot boring par threes. I, those are fine sometimes, but, um, there's a whole six at Ivy Hills and downhill 330 feet playing like 270 with the super fast screen. That's a good skill set to test as much as it is throwing 480 on a hyzer. And so there are a couple holes at Ivy Hill that are short. And I think, um, I, I'm, ex I think throwing a mid range or a putter for a top pro is cool. It's kind of cool to see. How long is it? The course uh, approximately MPO I mean, layout. I said short, you know, and it's still, um, I'm pulling it up right now, but it's still very, very long <laughs> because there are some, I mean, the last hole is 1100 feet, but, uh, Ivy Hill is still 11,794 feet for the men. Holy and then crap, that's huge for the women. It's 10,300. Oh my and God. So, and you may say, what you just, you what just it, bamboozled us talking about short par threes. That's massive. I know. There are a couple, um, a couple downhill holes that really, take away several hundred feet sure. of distance. Okay. Now there are a couple uphill holes as well, but Ivy Hill is not short. There are just a couple short holes, but even when Chris Dickerson played the flex event last year, he said it didn't seem that long. I think it's just because you're, you're, you're playing some of these downhill shots that take away so much elevation. Um, okay. So I, we saw an update from you somewhere on the internet, maybe just on disc golf scene that ticket sales were looking very brisk for worlds. Yes. Uh, can we get an update on that? Like how many, how many tickets, ha are, how many people are you expecting to see, let's say on the weekend uh, for this worlds? Yeah. I mean, we're, I mean, as of right now, I mean, we've surpassed um, I think what was done last year for worlds already. And I wow. think generally you see half your ticket sales in the last month. I don't think we'll see that here because we've already sold so many, but um Right now, we're probably, as of what's sold now, probably 3,000 a day on the weekend. Um, and, and that's, and that includes family and friends VIP tickets for the players. But I think we'll see 4,500 to 5,000 on the weekend, which, um, someone may say, well, that's less than Europe, uh, at the European Open. Maybe it is, but I, you know, we're charging $40 for GA tickets on Sunday. And so that's what they did yeah. in 2023. I personally think that's too expensive. And I, I think maybe long-term, maybe GA tickets need to go cheaper, VIP pricing higher for all events just to get people in the door. Cause we have video boards and stuff that they could enjoy there as well. But um, having that many tickets, you know, is I think pretty good for that price point. And now kids get in for, so there's, I'm counting kids there. I mean, kids don't pay $40. I mean, most kids are getting in for a cheaper price than that. So. Right. It was a massive payout last year. Uh, LL Bean title sponsor. Can you tell us anything about this year's sponsorship side of Worlds and what we might expect to see? Are you going to cross 300k in purse? Um. Well, I'm uh, pulling it up now. The the payout will be bigger than last year, so I can say that. Um. I don't know exact. It'll probably be five or ten thousand dollars higher. I'm pulling it up okay. now. Um. But I'm looking at the math, and we're looking. Um, our, our, our title sponsor is Zuka, so very happy with their support. Discraft and Innova are our big two partners. Um, but yeah, we are going to beat last year's purse by, I think, $10,000, if I'm looking at the math right. Uh, last which, year was two hundred seventy-five k. Yeah, I, I believe ours is two eighty-five. dollars 85 And somebody may naturally ask, oh, wow, that's a lot of Spectator ticket sales. You're selling them at, where's that money going? You know, after the event, I'll... I'm, I'm going to try to be as transparent as possible. Um, I think our staff costs for the event are a hundred grand. Our infrastructure is a hundred grand. The players get free food the entire week at Ivy Hill, whatever they want. They get golf carts all week for their practice rounds. We're paying for that with the PDGA. We rented a pool for them at Ivy Hill. It's a massive pool, rented pickleball courts. We rented a clubhouse <laughs> for them. So we're, we, we have three video boards. We have, We've rented a lot of infrastructure, bleachers, and um, a lot of things to, um, I mean, I could go down the list, but it is expensive to run the world championships. Um, I mean, we're spending um, over $35,000 on staff hotels, Airbnbs, you know, the, we have a fireworks show. Every gold ticket holder gets a Zuka cart, you know, um, 
we've spent, I think, $26,000 on tee pads because we did them once with uh, tee pads and then saw some issues with the existing tee pads that were the same as Florida Open and replaced them with X-Step Pro tee pads. Um, so I could go on and on, you know, I, I think our porta potty invoice is $10,000. So, um, you know, our ice invoice is $5,000. So, you know, it, it's expensive. And then we're putting up all the added cash. Um, and so, you know, and so I think all of that combined, um, it's going to be a great event, but it is expensive to run pro worlds. Yeah. Well, it's, it's going to be very exciting. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Any, anything to note for spectator amenities uh, for the Worlds? Yeah, we're going to have a spectator course at, at Ivy Hill. And so they'll, you can play that course. It's on the front nine of the golf course. The actual Worlds course is the back nine. That, that's a pretty cool thing. You'll be able to sign up for a sanctioned round through the Paul McBeth Foundation with a golf cart. We'll have amazing food vendors on site. Boz and Brewing will be serving uh, beer, other beer available as well. Um, 20 disc golf vendors in of a, we'll have an event pro shop. Tech Disc will be there. You can play a virtual hole on each course for the world championships. We'll have a Merrill Speed Gun tent, some games. Um, but honestly, just we have video boards set up and a, an amazing clubhouse at Ivy Hill it's going to be a very amazing setup to watch the world championships commentating booth right there on site, right above perch the 18th green at Ivy Hill. That's what I like um, to hear. So that's my, maybe my most favorite part is the 18th green is kind of an amphitheater and the commentators are going to be right above the green hundred feet away, perched on the clubhouse overlooking the green. So that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's a beautiful thing. I am looking forward to that. Uh, I did not know that until this moment. So that's very cool. I like uh, it. All right, Nate. Well, let me make sure I didn't miss anything else from Josh um, before I let you go. And I don't think so. Um, <laughs> one of his questions is, why didn't we just use Northwood? Something <laughs> I have to say, something about it feels different. When, when I think it was D-Glow, right? And Champions Cup were supposed to happen in the same year. No, Champions Cup was going to take Deglo's place. Okay, that's that right. Year. That's right. Because they had fixed that after we had had the double Emporia. Yes. Having double Emporia is different than having Northwood played for the major and then only two, like half the rounds of an Elite Series. I At think least the, for me. But maybe that's because it's Emporia and I just don't really want to watch it that much. But I think that um, I think that that's maybe more visible now. I think. Um, do people want to go to Emporia twice a year or Peoria? Probably not, oh. but do they want to play Northwood twice a year? I would say the answer I've gotten from the players is an unequivocal yes. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, they're all coming back from Europe, a lot of them, some there now. Did they want to arrive in Peoria two days before the event and then play Eureka and Northwood? Probably not. So I think that's the flip side. And Northwood is really challenging to spectate. So yeah, it's good for the players. But it's not great for media to see the disc in the air, and it's not great for spectators. But look, Northwood's coming back in 25, obviously, for Ledgestone. Um, and it was here this year for Champions Cup. I mean, I, I mean, it was amazing for me to have that there. It'll be back in 25, better than ever, and, and we'll have you know, more enhancements to that property. So, Awesome. Well, uh, Nate, thanks so much, as always, and uh, good luck with the event this weekend. And we'll certainly be looking forward. Oh, I, I have to, before I let you go, I have to ask, Ricky's not playing. He's dropping out probably due to the injury uh, that he got, uh, uh, you know, something about his rib popping out. I saw on yeah, Instagram and shoulder, he went to a yeah. chiropractor. Um, who, who you got? Who you think is going to take it down? But I would have said it was going to be a Ricky Paul battle because they both have had equal success here in PR. They both have won three elite series or majors here. Um, I mean, Paul looks good. Gannon looks good. Um, you know, someone told me that Ezra Robinson's been coming here for 10 years and has always been near the top. Um, so I think those maybe three on the MPO side, on the FPO side, you know, Missy's won here twice in a row. Paige has had success here. Kristen's not going to be here, but, um, you know, Owen has played well all year. And so maybe those three on the FPO side, Paige, Missy, and Owen, but... The field sizes are so deep that 
it wouldn't surprise me if Ledgestone has a, a feature or a, a lead card on Sunday of none of those players, you know? So, um, so I think it's going to be very exciting. So sure is. All right. Thank you so much, Nate. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Welcome back to the Upshot. The tour is traveling over 4,500 miles from Estonia to Peoria. Not quite the same IA ending places. <laughs> but uh, it's the third Elite Plus event of the season. Um, as Nate mentioned, some players are still dealing with some like flight issues. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some more drops. As noted in the interview, Ricky Waisaki dropping out of the event. Um, Ricky hasn't at the time that we're recording this, Ricky has not made a statement about it yet. Um, I heard it from Nate actually. And so I'm assuming that it has to do with his shoulder slash back slash rib injury situation. So, um, you know, hopefully he can get right. Obviously if you're tweaky at all, it's a clear spot to drop and get ready for worlds. You don't want to exacerbate a, a problem right now, just a couple weeks before worlds. Uh, you know the downside, as, as Nate talked about, though, uh, purse going up. Uh, this this one is always had just amazing payouts, thanks largely to the uh, you know Ledgestone Series discs that they sell all year long um, from Discraft. Uh, for reference, last year Ledgestone one hundred forty thousand, just shy of one hundred forty thousand uh, dollars in the twenty twenty three purse. Uh, that's it's a, it's a massive purse. <laughs> it's such a big purse for a disc golf pro tour event. It's true. It's, uh, I mean, it, yeah, you've made the case, Josh, that this feels like a major in many ways with the double, you know, two courses, distinct mm -hmm. skill sets required, payout uh, above even some of the majors, abo yeah. certainly above what we see at uh, European Open. It's going to clear Champions Cup this year, most likely. Yeah. Well. Yeah. So there's a, there's a lot to, to get excited about from from that kind of like pomp and circumstance perspective it's also just a massive am event that's true huge huge and and uh, nate mentioned up 12 percent this year in participation so increasingly seeing this being like a destination event for people mm -hmm. during their summer um yep. so no rick uh otherwise lots of the the main folks here obviously we're going to see some return of some players who skipped the European swing, like Owen Scoggins and Holland Handley. That's going to be cool. And uh, no Kristen. I think I mentioned that earlier this week or in the Rapid Reacts. Uh, Kristen's not playing again until Worlds. So that'll be interesting, right? Coming off kind of like one of her worst stretches of golf. Mm -hmm. She's then not playing again until the Worlds. <laughs> uh. Uh, it, it's just a big question mark of which Kristen shows up then, right? Are we going to keep getting this Kristen that's maybe exacerbated from not playing? Or does after another break and having gotten a little play in, she goes back and then comes back just all sorts of refocused and blows everybody out of the water? If Kristen wins Worlds, she's right back to player of the year. Uh, I think it's undisputed. I don't know yeah. how you pick anybody other uh, than I don't Kristen. think you could. I don't I think you could. can either. Um, <clears throat> so anyway, for Eureka, for Sunset Hills. Josh, yep. let's talk some of the numbers. Okay. Who has excelled at Eureka and Sunset Hills over the last few years? Well, let's start over in FPO because it's kind of a boring storyline and one that I don't think is likely to repeat itself. Paige Pierce dominates at Sunset Hills. Uh, but that's also paired with pretty strong performances from Katrina Allen, two that I just, you know, we're not worrying about. Paige has shot the best cumulative scores at Sunset Hills. Uh, we went back from 2019, so we've got five years of data. Uh, Paige has shot the best rounds 2019, 2021, and 2022. In 2020, uh, Katrina Allen beat her out at Sunset Hills. If you go to a little bit more recent data, though, last year, this is when Paige did not play it because she broke her ankle right at the European stretch that happens just before yep. Ledgestone. Yep. Uh, Holland Hanley was the best player at Sunset Hills, but it was very close. She had a total of 111 strokes. Missy was 112. Own and Macy Valadez were 113. Sarah Hokum and Stacey Ronsley won 14. Uh, Hannah Wynn and Ella Hansen won 15, right? And, and so... For context, Paige shot 106 total strokes the year prior. True. And I have not... I, I did not, not recall cars. what kind of changes they had. Yeah. Yes. So take that with a grain of salt. 
um, as we're looking. But that's the other thing that I think is of note is that Missy is excellent at Sunset Hills. Uh, well, excellent is probably not the right word. Uh, Missy is ever present no, no. at Sunset she, Hills. She's excellent. She's excellent. She she has been second best at Sunset Hills over the past three years. That's that's got to be considered excellent. Okay, that's I think so too. She she plays really well at at relative to the field at Northwood, which is why she has won this back to back event, uh, back to back years at this event because she separates herself at Northwood, uh, but she is very consistently good at Sunset Hills, and despite the fact that she shot, uh, what was it, five strokes worse than Paige at Sunset Hills, managed to make up those strokes and win in twenty twenty two. The entire event thanks to her play at Northwood. So it's interesting because you could definitely see Missy being a contender here and, a, you know, a favorite and probably is the favorite going into this weekend. But it's clear that there are some players that, based on distance as well, Holland, Page, distance may play a factor in an ability to shoot low, low, low scores that drive someone to the win playing for only four rounds here. Great, great stats, great notes. Um, I feel like. Yeah, I won't blame you if you pick Missy this weekend, get, given her level of play. But uh, is Paige a sneaky pick? Paige kind of feels like a sneaky pick here once again. Yeah, yeah. I know That's... she didn't play that great over in Europe, but she also didn't play like terrible. I don't think she. So she skipped. Um, she skipped Estonia, right? Right. So she's back now. A little bit of a break. Here's the thing. At uh, at Beast, she shot a 63 and a 65, 983 rated, 975 rated. Now that's not remarkable, but it was the, the 63 was the second best round on on that day, yep. and the 65 was like the fourth best round on the next day, and like that's a harder course than Sunset Hills. I don't know. Paige is capable of winning this tournament. Paige has a win this season. Yes. And yeah. not necessarily on what I would call a similar course, but Sunset has the ability for a long thrower like Paige to have opportunities for Eagles. Um, if she can keep it in bounds and she can start to hit some putts, she's got a chance. Well, that's that's the other thing is she can disc down where play, people are throwing you know, drivers. She could throw mids on some of these holes. Uh, in years past, who even is the favorite here? Is it Missy or is it Holland? It's got to, it's got to be Missy to me. Uh, Holland, Holland did play well last year uh, at this these courses, but but she was pretty uh, unremarkable back in 2022, where she was ten strokes off of the pace at Sunset Hills. So, you know, that's one that what kind of what kind of Holland shows up, right? Is yep. it the Holland who's going to make putts, or is it going to be the Holland who? Uh, you know, can't keep it in bounds and looks like round three at uh, OTB Open. That's that's the big question mark on on Holland. I think Missy's got to be your favorite. Uh, I think Holland is up there. Own as well has got. Uh, that's probably the order I'd give it. Missy Holland Own, uh, with Paige probably sitting at fourth. If I were putting odds on. All right, I'm gonna make my picks. You ready? I'm ready. FPO picks. Okay. Third place. Own Scoggins got some okay. rest. Yeah. Ready for the dog to bark. Hopefully she's healthy. Number two, scratch the own pick. I'm sorry. I have to doubt the dog. <laughs> <laughs> Holland Handley, three. <laughs> for just for context, folks, the last time Charlie made picks and didn't write it down, he put Calvin on the podium twice. <laughs> I'm going to get it right. So. <laughs> Holland, three. <laughs> Missy, two. Okay. Page one. Crazy. I love I it. I picked Page once this year. I got it. I've been I've <laughs> she hasn't even been on my podium in months. Yep. And right. she's going back at the top of my picks. Uh I won't doubt the dog. Give me own at three. Uh I'm putting Holland at two. Mm, oh, which Holland? I'm putting Missy at two and Holland at one. I think I think Holland is gonna be able to come and play just the kind of level like confident, level headed golf that when she, that she plays when she wins. So sorry, give it to me again. You're gonna Holland. Yeah, Holland for the win, Missy in the two, Missy. Own in the three. Oh, got it. I got it written down. Okay. All right. Uh, no duplicates on our podiums? Well. <laughs> no. Uh, it, oh, 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 right. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You didn't pick I Paige twice? I did not. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, 
I mean, listen, when Calvin, when I picked Calvin <laughs> twice, the guy was so hot that I just wanted to make sure I had him on my podium. Was, you mean you mean the guy who only won twice the entire year yeah, last year? Yeah, I know, but he was Mr. Consistency, Josh. <laughs> Doesn't Hater. <you> pick him? <laughs> uh, all right, let's talk about MPO. What are the right. Eureka stats showing us? A uh, little bit mixed. And actually, interestingly, um, Ricky is not... Um, like I would, I expected Ricky to be amazing at re- Eureka. Uh, I thought that kind of the combo forehand backhand allows him to take lines and kind of avoid the OB uh, and his long putts set him up on some of those kind of longer par threes. Ricky's actually okay at Lake Eureka, but he's, he's not nothing spectacular relative to the kind of consistent performance I personally expected. Uh, Calvin Heinberg was. Uh, hands down the best at Lake Eureka last year at 101 strokes. And that's even with Cole Riddallen shooting the course record 49. And so despite that, now Cole is only one stroke behind, but I think that speaks to, as you were saying, the level of consistency of Calvin at this event last year uh, in those two rounds. He was unable to catch Cole and Cole did take down the win, uh, but a 50 and a 51 out of Calvin, sparkling rounds uh, that you have to like for this year. 2022, Corey Ellis was actually your best player by three strokes at Lake Eureka. This might be like a sneaky Corey Ellis time be a to sneaky show pick. up. It'd be a sneaky yeah. pick. This is a, this is a, this is a depth pick for your uh, fantasy leagues, folks. That's right. Uh, but Gannon was in second. Uh, Rick in third. Alden Harris. Anthony Barella was in fifth uh, back in 2022. So not not too bad there. Uh, the, the duplications just are not there this year. Uh, Cole Rudolin. Back in 2021, this was when it was canceled, the final round. And so Calvin and Ricky shared the win. There was only one round at Lake Eureka. Rick and Drew shot the hot rounds. But like Dickerson, Cole Rudolin, Paul McBeth, Calvin Heimberg, Eagle, Andrew Marweed, Kyle Klein, all shot 55s or better. Uh, so that, take that one with a little bit of a grain of salt. After that, 2019 and 2020 belongs to Paul McBeth. He beat Ricky by several strokes. Um one by three a five stroke beat Ricky by five strokes in 2019 when it was only at Lake Eureka. And that's the year that Paul beat Rick at worlds as well. So won twice in Peoria back in 2019, he also outperformed Rick, uh, by two strokes at Lake Eureka in 2020. So Paul, another kind of feels like Paige Pierce. He's good here. He plays well and he's played a lot of it here. Um, some of your depth picks Ezra Robinson played well last year. Chris Dickerson has showed up a couple times throughout the list, and Andrew Marweed is beginning to make his appearance as he does near the end of the season. So he also seems to succeed at Lake Eureka and played pretty well. All right, you want to make your picks? I'll let you go first. Okay, hang on. I gotta pull up. I gotta make sure I have the the registration still available uh, because we have picked people who are you don't want to you don't want to pick before. someone who's not on the list. Yeah, we've both done look. it. We have. You hate to do it. <laughs> uh, Ezra Robinson in the three. Gannon Burr in the two. Paul McBeth to keep his Elite Series streak going. Ooh, I like it. Paul has had some very, very big success here. Yeah. And he's been playing well coming out of Europe. Very well. So... I'm going to be checking day of registration. I may have to make some tweaks if Paul drops. I don't know if he will or not, but I'm. I don't know why he would. Well, because a lot of people are. I mean, that's fair. We don't, I guess we don't totally know what's. Yeah. Where people are. So sorry. Give them to me again. You're going. Yeah, you're good. Ezra. Uh, oh, one Paul, two Gannon, three Ezra. Ezra in third or Paul to win? Paul to win. Ezra in third. Macbeth to win. Macbeth to win. Gannon in the two. And Ezra Robinson, Robinson. in the three. Yep. Okay. Uh, it it feels bad not picking Cole Rudolin after what he did last year, but that man lets me down so often. I'm done. I mean, it's but just he hasn't had the same kind of he, level he this not. year so far. He is not. Um, I'm gonna go Gannon to win it. I gotta save a, a spot for Dickerson. I think I'm gonna put him in my three. I just like the way he's played here. He's been one of the more consistently strong performers at this tournament. Yep. Um. <sighs> Is it time for a Calvin comeback? I'm going to go Calvin. For the two? The two. Okay. Burr, Heimberg, Dickerson. There's the on, everybody. 
Um, <laughs> and so, yeah, Gannon, Gannon to stay hot. Okay. I like the Macbeth pick, though. I really do. I just, I'm not quite ready to say that his streak of winning elite events is over. You can't say. No. And it's, this, he's got to get this, one. This feels good. This is a tournament that really feels likely. Um, Josh Barbasol is back as the presenting partner of the DGPT playoffs and DGPT championship through the end of the 2025 season. Look, recurring sponsorships are a great thing. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. Uh, you know, and, and Heinold talking about the fact that, you know, ticket sales are a bit flat, but amateur is up makes me think and and it's something i've kind of i think i've been observing around here as well just locally is it feels like people are kind of consolidating what they're doing for disc golf right they're picking the events they're going to they're picking the events they're watching uh they're picking what they want to play and spectate in and so they are becoming more selective but there is still a lot of energy around disc golf and you know sponsorships like that and you know i i gotta say I, I don't think i mentioned it on the reacts but i remember when i was watching i turned on a dgn uh, right as one of the cool bets ads came on i was the betting partner over in uh, estonia and and that popped up and i was like man this is a really well-produced ad like what am i i don't <laughs> know what i'm watching right now <laughs> it wasn't you know disc golf players knocking a cat disc out of a tree <laughs> so uh uh, big big change, big difference, and it's it's nice to see them coming back. All right. Well, Ledgestone starts tomorrow, so get ready for four rounds of action from Peoria, Illinois. We're on the road to Worlds just over, well, from three weeks from today, uh, Worlds starts. So the Worlds chatter will be starting to get going. Let us know your thoughts. Upshot at ultiworld.com, and you might find yourself uh, giving the mailbag question of the week and getting yourself a free subscription. Uh, but you can also buy a subscription at discgolf.ultiroll.com slash subscribe. Get into the Discord. Get all the Rapid Reacts. We'll be with you Sunday for Rapid Reacts and uh, all a lot more. So thank you so much. For Josh Mansfield, I'm Charlie Eisenman saying so long, and we will see you next week on The Upshot. Upshot.